So here we, we've got a room of 27 of what you call notebooks. You carry a notebook with you most of the time. Right? Yeah, usually, always. And, and I make drawings almost always, almost every day. And for me, it's like a language. It's a way to think. And it's just a way to keep my eye in tune with my hand. I don't show them because I think of them more as things I want to reflect upon in notations. I don't think of them as the history of autonomous drawings that are going to extend the vocabulary of drawing, but I think of them as a subtext to my seeing and as a diaristic notebook of where I've been, what I'm doing. This is uh, the two notebooks of uh, Corbusier's Ranchon, which I think is like one of the better buildings in the world. One of the interesting things um, about Ranchon is the fact that the walls are about a foot and a half thick and that they're punctured, that lets light come in, in a way that creates a volume between the walls where the space is um, almost palpable. You almost feel like you can touch it. So the void of the space in Ranchon is matter that you sense as a physical thing. And I hadn't been anywhere like that. Maybe the Hagia Sophia, and maybe some uh, churches that ring Madrid. They're called Mozarabique churches. I was very, very impressed, and I made two series of notebooks there. But I've, I've gone back there because one of the things I find about that space is that when you leave the space, your recollection of the space is that it's an enormous volume. When you're in the space, it's quite small. These are spaces that compress the volume to the point where they seem quite large. And that's something that doesn't exist in a lot of um, sculpture. Happens to exist in architecture. Do I think that I'm making architecture and I'm making sculpture? No, but I have learned a lot from looking at Romanesque volumes, looking at Mozart or Beek volumes, and looking at industrial volumes.